So now let's talk about the scallop border triangles solid pieces. So we have, you have about 15 pieces, you need 14 of these, and these come in your packets. And what I also have is a pile of fabrics that coincide with the kind of fabrics that I have on my quilt. And so these pieces were pre-cut. One thing I'm, I'm learning about these pieces is that with the directional, I'm not sure if I can fit two triangles on each one when it comes to fussy cutting. So I'm going to have to play with that a bit. But um, I did play with one of the pieces and if it's not directional it does take two of these pieces and so I put one side here with a with a seam allowance and then I'm going to trim this down a bit here I'm going to use a gathering stitch on the outside here so I can have a snug outside and then I did the same here but as you can tell, it's a bit directional, so when it if I do this for this, it's going to be a little different. So I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to leave it this way. And what I'm using on this is, because they're so big, I'm using a big glue stick, and I'm just using it lightly so that it holds it. And so I'm going to put a bunch of these together, and I also have a pack of my, this is my top row triangles, and then I'll be able to... Once I have these all paired up and stuff, I'll be able to lay them out because I've got a real scrappy thing going on here. And I can lay them out and then I can decide which pieces go where. So I played with this a little bit and so I am able to squeeze these two pieces on one piece of fabric in a directional fashion um, as long as I'm real careful. I may have to mark these on some of these patterns, but I just want to show you that I am able to do that on these pieces, but I would cut ones bigger than whatever this is. I, like I said, I think this is a fat eighth. Um, I would be happier with a fat quarter or even a couple more inches this way. So what I've done now is I have my all of my triangles, scallop triangles, labeled and cut for placement. So what I'm going to do for basting is I'm going to baste one side and then the other. I am going to baste the same side first on each one of these so that these tags down in the corners all go the same way, although I don't know that it matters because it's going to be between two piece triangles. But anyway, so I'm going to glue baste these straight sides, and then I'm going to gathering stitch baste on this side so that I get a nice smooth curve. And then I'm going to be able to place it in my the order that I've picked in my border with my piece triangles. So now I've got my gathering stitch edges on all my solid triangles. So this has all been done. Um, if you're looking for this um, technique, I do have it listed in the applique section of the general information videos. So now I'm going to, I've attached this one and I've attached it matching up this point to this end and this point to this edge. Now sometimes this edge might be a little off based on the way that I've done this because there's a lot of thickness there with my fabric so there's a little leeway to give here and there. So I'm going to line this up at this point and then down here the things I'm going to run into is alignment issues and gaps. What you can see here, first of all this was my first triangle. I, this is my top row and my top row was my first triangle I ever did so I didn't quite have my techniques down and some of them are very off kilter. So it's just a matter of working them in, I hope. So this has got a little bit of a gap. So what I'm going to do is I'll line this up and then I'll ease that in together. And once the papers are out, it's not going to be noticeable. I also have this thread basted, which is something I did early on. And I realized later I didn't want to take the time to do thread basting. So I will take the thread basting out as I go on. I'm not going to take this one out because it's not attached to the quilt yet. But I can once I get this in place, I can take all of this out. So as I'm going down here, I'm just going to do this, and I use that flat back stitch method where I tape it. I put it in place, and I tape it so it stays where I want it to go. And then I'm just going to sit here and then assemble the rest of it. And this is one of them that's off considerably with the, the angle here. It kind of curves off to the edge. 
So I'm going to try to ease that in as well. So we will see just how just how bad these top triangles are as I go. But I will get assembling and see what I run into. So I've attached the second solid one and I'm going I went to tape this to this and I wanted to point out how bad this was. This has got all of this dimensional thing and this is flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at one end and stitch to about here-ish, tie off and go to the other side as I go through these intersections. I'm going to come to here. As I come to each intersection, I'm going to come here and I'm going to go across this way, pulling this tighter across the seam. And then I'm going to go this way as well. Make this little X right here. And what that does is it pushes this, this intersection closer together so it minimizes the effect of this fabric adding distance. As I do this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to take up some of that distance and then I can work in the rest of this as I go. So now I've attached all of my piece triangles to all of the scalloped triangles and this is what is going to be my top border of my Dear Jane quilt.